the one thing that's really required if you want to have an effective meditation practice, and that means a meditation practice that really sustains you, fills you with joy, gives you energy, helps you to negotiate the challenges that come your way from one day to the next, makes you kinder, more resilient, more forgiving, and more open to whatever might be required of the day. It's important for everyone to have a place to begin. I'll tell you a very uh, short, somewhat amusing story about how I learned this particular rule of life. It's important to have a rule of life, a simple rule, if you're going to engage in any kind of spiritual practice. Without that, you really don't have a rudder of any kind. You don't have any way to steer. It's very easy to go in circles. It's very easy to find your self in a sea with no wind, slack sails, drifting, pointing in who knows what direction. But with the gentle wind of a simple rule at your back, it's possible to make some progress every day. So this is how I <clears throat> learned the lesson of this simple rule. It came from a person I didn't actually know. But I had uh, read his book, and he told this story in the book about traveling to Nepal in the early days when many people were leaving America, many young people, and traveling to Nepal and hanging out with teachers there, oftentimes out of doors on a hillside. And so uh, this particular man went out one day on a hillside to receive uh, empowerment from a Tibetan Lama Rinpoche, an older man who smiled a lot, gave a brief teaching, and empowered those who had assembled most of whom were from America and Europe, to practice a mantra every day. And he had a small uh, vase, I think of water, symbolic of nectar, which he ran around and tapped to each person's forehead. And as he did this, each person would vow to practice a certain number of mantras. And in the beginning, people were very reasonable about the number of mantras that they vowed to say every day. A person would say 100 mantras. Another person would say 100 mantras. But then gradually, as they went around, people got a bit competitive about it and overzealous, until finally it wasn't even clear if it had any meaning. 10,000 mantras a day. 20,000 mantras a day, like a bidding war. So finally they came to the man who was writing the book and he said, one mantra, one mantra a day. And uh, the way he told it, people were slightly scandalized. You know, I come all this way, sat on this mountainside, and this Lama, you know, enlightened master, and vowed to say only one mantra a day. It didn't seem uh, like a very... Uh, genuine vocation to a lot of people. And even the Lama was a bit taken aback and said, what? And the man said, one mantra. And then the Rinpoche smiled and tapped him on the forehead with the vase. So I read this story and it ended there. He said nothing more. I called his publisher and finally I got him on the phone a couple of hours later. He said, well, what can I do for you? And I said, I just have one question for you. How long ago was that story? How long ago did that take place? And he said, well, it's been almost 30 years. And I said, and how many of those people who vowed to say all those mantras on that hillside that day do you think have honored their vow? And he said, well, I don't know most of them, but 
of those I know, I would say probably none. And I said, I have one last question for you. Have you honored your vow to say one mantra a day? And he laughed and he said, in fact, yes, I have. And I said, and what has the effect of that one mantra been on your life? And he got a little choked up. I don't think anybody had asked him that question before. I think I was the first one. And he said, well, it's been utterly profound. Utterly profound. So a simple rule is just what it sounds like, a simple rule of practice. Something that you vow to do that is very, very, very modest. 